Increased tensions around the country, coupled with reports of voter intimidation, have caused concern about voting in person on November 3rd. Luckily, we haven't had any reports of that kind of disruption here in the bi-state, and we'd like to keep it that way. Brown and Crouppen is making sure we stay informed if we are planning to vote in person this November. So Andy, today we're talking about voter intimidation uh, in regards to the upcoming election. What exactly does that mean? So uh, voter intimidation can take many, many forms, and it's always wrong and it's always illegal. Um, the rhetoric in this country has gotten very contentious. Um, emotions are running high. Uh, and I think a lot of people are resorting to behavior that is not historically seen at election times. People are encouraging others to go to polling places and intimidate voters in ways that really I've never seen before in my lifetime. And that behavior is illegal. So what is voter intimidation? It can be a lot of things. It can be lying to people about voting requirements. It can be falsely representing yourself as an election official. It can be aggressively outside questioning someone about their citizenship, who they're voting for, their criminal record, um, displaying false or misleading signs about voter fraud and criminal penalties. It can be harassing voters, um, name calling, threats of violence outside. Um, it, it can take many forms, but really what it comes down to is any behavior that is discouraging someone from voting or scaring someone about their vote, all that is encompassed in voter intimidation. And how do we how do we prepare ourselves for something like that? I, luckily, that hasn't really been happening here in Missouri, right? But how, how do we prep ourselves if that does become an issue? First of all, I think everyone should have a voting plan. Know where you're going to vote. Know how you're going to vote. Know what you need to vote. It's different in every state <clears throat> what the requirements are. In Missouri, you do have to have an ID. It does not have to be a photo ID. You can bring a utility bill. Um, there are a lot of different ways to do it, okay? Only if election officials can ask you for identification. So, you know, I know there's been a lot of talk about people just going to polling places and being election watchers. They can't do that. You have to be qualified. You have to take a course. You have to have the right to be there. If you're in line to vote when the polls close, you have the right to vote, period. It doesn't matter if it's two in the morning before you get to the front of the line, they have to keep those polling places open for everyone who is in line when the poll closes. Um, I, I would say this, if you see anything that you think is even bordering on election voter intimidation, I would take a picture of the person, I would take a video if possible of the person, I would report it to the election officials on the scene, I would also call Google your local election office. I would call the election protection hotline, get everyone involved, call the news, call whoever you think you need. 1-866-R-VOTE is a number you can call for the election protection hotline. So if you see something, say something, know your rights, have a voting plan and vote, please. If you need legal advice, give the experts at Brown and Crouppen a call at 314-222-2222 or visit getbc.com and be sure to check out their YouTube channel.